So last night we got about three inches of snow, light powdery, easy to clean up and just sweep it off the uh, porch. So knock that out and do some little tasks around here, but I'm not doing anything big today. Biggest task I have today is uh, running to the lake, getting some water and uh, got to bring some wood up the hill. I don't have much wood up here right now. I'm just cutting down the standing dead trees and bringing them up the hill as I need them. But I'm going to knock this out and take care of the lake water and bring that wood up. Do some little tasks around here, cleaning up. Uh, I don't think I'm going to get around to my kitchen drawers this time. I, I just, I don't have enough time and uh, I'll just save that for the spring. We'll see how it goes though. I might get motivated and uh, knock that out. This is how the snow usually is up here. Light and powdery and you can just sweep it off the porch. It's nice because it stays off the roof then too. You get the heavy wet snow and that stuff sticks to the roof and you gotta rake it off. And seems most of the snow that we've gotten this year has been uh, heavy and wet. It's nice to see this powdery stuff for a change. So we've got some great sun this morning. That's uh, helping me charge up the solar. Got some wind too, but the batteries are pretty charged up. So the brake has got the uh, wind turbine shut down. They won't spin up until they detect that the batteries are low in voltage. And uh, right now the voltage is pretty high. And, both battery banks, the outside and the inside. While I was gone, these guy wires, they loosened up. And I don't know if the clamp up there slid down the pole or what caused those to loosen up. I still need to put the bigger wire on there. Although this small diameter wire seems to be holding up. Seems to be doing its job. I think that clamp is what came loose. It's uh, 18 degrees this morning. Probably about 15 mile an hour wind. Feels great. See how the snow drifts through here. Overnight, this little ledge is formed. But the snow is so light and powdery. I'll just I'll knock that down with the snow machine. One pass. So I got a couple things I'm going to do to the summit here. I got a short riser finally. That thing's way too tall. I got hand guards. Also have a finger throttle to install. I can get rid of this. Problem with this is you have no grip. You're only gripping with your fingers. With the finger throttle, I'll have much more control over it. Got a little gadget for the uh, kill switch to keep the uh, trees from Shutting off the snow machine it's through a company called Race Rubber. This keeps your uh, kill switch from being engaged when you go through trees and something hits it. Now you actually have to press and hold, which in some circumstances might not be good, but you should always have your kill switch on. All right, let's go check out that other windshield.
All right, let's see if this is the right windshield. It also requires a piece of trim that runs up this way and that's still on order. That is the correct windshield. Nice. So as soon as I get that piece of trim, I can get this installed. That won't be until the next time. So the other snow machine is gonna have a finger throttle like this one. This machine, you can spin it around and have it as a thumb. Have it down here, wherever you like it. Big problem with this though is uh, branches hitting your hand and you pin it, you pin the throttle. But on the other snow machine, it's actually gonna have a throttle guard and the hand guards. I may end up putting hand guards on this one too. We'll, we'll see. I do prefer the finger throttle because you have so much more grip on the handlebar. When you're like this, with your thumb on the throttle, it's just, you have no grip on the bar. Put that uh, little device on this kill switch too, so branches will hopefully not shut my uh, snow machine down when I don't want it shut down. So here's the old windscreen. When I bought the white snow machine, it, it came with this windscreen and it got broke and I put the large windscreen on it and I, I don't like it at all. I think I'll have that old piece of trim around here somewhere for this, but I don't remember seeing it in a long, long time. So I got a new one coming. So this is how I get those 360 shots. This needs to be tighter or else it'll flop around. A little ram mount on the front of the snow machine. So that's it. That's how I get those shots.
Oh wow, there's a lot of water. So this overflow, it can happen a number of different ways. You could have a creek that flows on top of the lake ice. You could have a snowfall overnight like what we did last night. Only two or three inches, but the weight on top of the ice pushes it down. Anywhere there's a crack or anything, the, the lake water comes out on top of the ice. This will freeze if it's given enough time and uh, cold enough temperatures, but it's really not that, it hasn't been that cold as it normally is, so overflow is a big problem right now. Yeah, I'm gonna let that freeze up because the problem with this is my cover is just gonna get frozen in there. It needs to sit on top of ice, not be part of the ice. And, uh, so this windsock is to keep uh, planes from landing on top of this. If anybody decides to fly in here, I don't want them uh, landing on top of that cover I'm gonna take the cover back up So this 360 camera that I use, it records in all directions, up, down, side, front, back. And it gets changed and edited. So then I can face the camera where I want it. And I can zoom in and out. Alright, so that job's done.